Good evening, good evening. As I say, Dumela, Sawabona, Sakpase, Namaste, Upshin, Dubraota, Assalamu Alaikum, Hotep, Buenos Noches, Bonsoir. Good evening to everyone in the audience. Welcome to another episode of the Lot Carry Wise, which is women in service everywhere, digital couch. We want to thank you for coming and joining with us this evening. We are live on a number of platforms and we want to welcome you all. Whatever platform you are on, we want you definitely to share this broadcast out, invite your friends, especially invite people who are from Guyana because we have one of the leaders in ministry in the country of Guyana on our digital couch tonight. Let me give, say a special thank you to the executive secretary, treasurer of Lot Carey, which is the Reverend Emmett L. Dunn, to President Gregory Jackson, to First Vice President Gina Stewart, to Second Vice President Dr. Jesse Williams, to the Women in Service Everywhere, First Vice President Dr. Angelita Clifton, Second Vice President Dr. Brenda McBarrow, and in memory of Sister Rosette Tab Graham. We are so blessed and honored for you to join us tonight on the digital couch. And also thank you for those people who dressed in black today because today is Thursdays in Black where when you don your black for that day, you are representing those who are standing up for the gender, the, the violence that is being, um, uh, that is being, what's the best word? Lauded or being uh, put onto women, excuse me, uh, um, across the world. So we want to thank you very much for representing, uh, not just in Lot Carey and Lot Carey Wise, but across the world. So tonight, tonight on our digital couch, and this is episode three, episode three uh, of our series, we have the Reverend Harewood. Reverend Harewood. We are so excited to have her on our digital couch tonight. So I want to make sure that everybody has what they need. Please, I hope you have your tea. Reverend Harewood has her tea. Let's see your, and if you notice, if you notice, put it up to the camera. Her cup represents Guyana. All right. So on the couch, we sit back. We have a nice little chat. We have a conversation. It is about ministry. It is about leadership. And it is trying to bring the people who are around the world who participate in ministry, who are leaders in mission work and bring them to us because we can't necessarily go to them. So this is our way to do it. Welcome and good evening, Reverend Harewood. Thank you for having me, Sister Lariel. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be a part of this venture of Lot Carey Wise, the digital couch. It's an honor to be with you. Excellent, excellent. So we have a couple of questions that we will already uh, that we already have donned out, but I do want to give to our audience, to our viewers, an opportunity to drop a comment in the chat and the way that you do that is one of the best ways is if you can please drop your comment if it says Streamyard wants you thank you very much yes i'm so please let me um clarify thursdays in black is to represent people who are standing against gender-based violence thank you very much thank you very much uh if you drop your comments drop a comment into the comment section in order for me to not just say hi, Facebook user, but to say your name and to give you proper honor, uh, please allow StreamYard to see your name so that I can call you the name that you want to be called. All right. Uh, so we have a couple of questions again. So please drop a, a question or a comment into the chat and we'll be able to field them through the conversation. So people who are on our digital couch include 
again, inspirational leaders. Thank you, Facebook user. <laughs> People who are uh, across the world and who are participate in missions. And we, we just want to ask them some questions and see how they're connected to Lot Carry, what brought them to Lot Carry, why we partner with them and they partner with us, why they feel that we are worthy of coming alongside them in order to shore them up, in order to support them and support their mission work. Reverend Harewood has a very, very special connection, not just to Lot Carey, but to the mission work globally. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So the first question uh, that I have for you is GMBC. Now we, of course, we had some pre-chat. I had to do my homework. So I'd like for you really to help us understand GMBC, how amazing it is and what it has done globally for decades, for decades. So give us some background on GMBC. Okay, GMBC is the acronym for the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church, Lot Carey. We are a denomination that has been in existence for 60 years. Last year, we celebrated in October our 60th anniversary. The Guyana Missionary Baptist Church was founded by the late Reverend Dr. Carlisle A. Miller and the Reverend Ermeline Miller. They were medical missionaries who felt God's call and realized that for them, it was not enough to just do church. So they have all, so as a, as a denomination, we have always brought together action with our teaching and preaching, um, reaching out to the community, the least of these. And in Guyana, the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church comprises six congregations, the Wendell Somerville Camp and the A. Carlisle Miller Health Center. Um, each congregation is connected in their community in a variety of ways and are, are primarily our areas of service are missions, um, Christian education, or I should, I should say more um, Christian education and empowerment and stewardship. So, so the, the, the areas where we serve are mission outreach, Christian formation, stewardship, and evangelism. So those would be the, the broad areas that the Guyana Missionary Baptist comprises. And of course, on the Christian formation are things like worship and Sunday school and youth ministry, the traditional things. On the mission outreach would be our connection as we understand God's mission of the church. We, we connect not just to those in the church, but the wider community outside of the church. And then of course there's um, understanding evangelism also as a part of our mission, um, being faithful to the, the, the mandate that Christ gave to the church in Acts chapter one, eight, he said, when the Holy Spirit is come upon you, you shall be my witnesses. And so we try to bring them together. Um, and we are not just a local church. We serve Guyana nationally. We'll spread out across communities in Guyana. But in addition to that, we understand that the call of the church is a global call. And so we have global partners. We are connected to the Caribbean Baptist Fellowship, which is a fraternal organization. And I serve as their vice president. Um, and then we are connected to the Baptist World Alliance, uh, another fraternal organization. And then we are connected by Lot Carey. Lot Carey is our 
primary and only supporting mission partner. The other groups are fraternal groups where we serve, but our supporting mission partner is La Carrie, and we've had this partnership since 1970. Okay, so for 50, 50, right? 50 years that you've connect, been connected to La Carrie. Excellent, excellent. So part of the mission work, it sounds like, is the getting, the growing, the supporting, and then the outreach. So the, the fellowship to bring more people in when you talked about- Going, stay with your G's, the going. No. Okay. <laughs> You picked that up, didn't you? <laughs> didn't you? Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. Hold on. Somebody type that in. The getting, the growing. <laughs> Let's call it the gifting. What was the last one? And the getting. Going. The going. going. Okay. going. Getting, Somebody giving, and going. <laughs> that'll, you know, that'll preach, right? That'll preach somewhere. Okay. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, preachers like. Preachers love alliterations. <laughs> now, those people who follow me know I love alliterations, assonance. I love all of it. I love. I need to. I need to get people to stick with my what I'm talking about. Excellent. So, so thank you for the history on the GMBC. Now, uh, in our in our conversation, you talked about being the vice president of a partner. Thank you, Facebook user who wrote that down for me. Uh, uh, being a partner in a fraternal relationship. And then you have a vice presidency role in leadership in on one of these, uh, another arm of the organization. So something that we spoke about that I'm extremely interested in hearing about is wings. Wings. Please tell us about wings, what it who who they are, how they are connected to you and what they do. Because of course there's the literal wings and then there's the metaphorical wings. So how do they take off and fly? How do they support the body to outstretch and to spread the information? All right, wings is the women ministry in the Guyana Missionary Baptist congregations. And WINGS is an acronym for Women in God's Service. Okay, pause right there, hold on. Somebody Wings. type that Women in, in God's service. service. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So what, pause just for a second. So those people who are just coming in, if you were a little tardy to the party, I am sitting and who's on our digital couch tonight is Reverend Brenda Harewood. And she is talking about the GMBC, the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church. She is talking about the connection to Lot Carey and the partnership that we've had for oh, five plus now decades. And I need some a stream team. A stream team does two things. Every single person in here is going to help us out by doing two things. Number one, if you are able to share, even though this is a private conversation on one platform, I'm streaming to a number of different platforms. So we will be able to reshare this to other people and to other platforms. But if you can invite people in who you know are not here, but you know they need to be here, please invite them in. That's number one. Number two, anything that is said that resonates with you, anything that is said that makes you go, mm, either I didn't know that or somebody else should know that, please type that into the chat because it allows us to keep the conversation going. If you have a question, it allows us to get more information that we can respond to and address. And it also helps things that sometimes even in a prepared speech, certain things just sort of pop out of our head and out of our heart and out of our spirit that we didn't mean to say, but it is such good fodder, right? That's the best term to use that we can also continue and share more information about. So if you wouldn't mind, if you hear something that sounds really great, be my stream team, be my scope squad, help us out and just jot down certain things that you think are great aha moments. I appreciate it. All right. So Wings, tell us about Wings. Yes. As I said, Wings is women in God's service. And that is the name for the women's ministry in our various congregations. So each congregation has a wings ministry. 
that is engaged with their pastor and their community. And they understand that their role is to work with the pastor and with sisters to, to do the things that I talked about earlier, Christian formation, mission, stewardship, evangelism. But the way we are structured in, in the GMBC, so you have that in each congregation, but we have councils in the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church, and we have a woman's council. And so every president of wings makes up the council, a president and one representative from each congregation. And as so that's the overarching body of wings, which is the women's council. And so even though each congregation has ministries that they do as part of the women, at a national, at a denominational level, the Women's Council plans and helps to execute particular events and programs to, to encourage and to make sure that the other wings ministry are functioning at the capacity that they can. So some of the annual events for wings is we have an annual women's conference, which we normally coincides with International Women's Day. So it's always the weekend in March, closest to March 8th. In, in addition to that, we have forums, um, breast cancer awareness, etc. And of course, we are part of women lifting our voices with the World Council of Churches Thursdays in Black. So every Thursday, one of the congregational congregations led by wings is responsible for making sure that there's a post that there's a voice on gmbc media platforms and we also have an annual uh, women's in black forum we launched it two years ago um at our biennial convention we had a community march and we made um, the public aware of this issue. And so we have been educating our congregations and we have been educating our communities and letting people also know that our congregations are safe places for women who need to talk or women who need to be counseled or women who need to direct it and get help to get out of situations that are abusive and not only women, but children as well. So we have been very involved in this for the last two years and continue to lift our voices. So, so WINGS is about women's empowerment, but not just women, young women as well. So the, the other thing that WINGS does is that it's concerned about the mentorship of our younger women. So many of our leaders in WINGS, part of their responsibility is, is committing to mentoring at least one woman, one young woman annually. Some of them do more, but those are the kind of commitment that WINGS does. So, so we under, and, and then in addition to what we do locally, because we are a part of the Caribbean Baptist Fellowship, which keeps coming up, yeah. uh, they have a women's department and so our president serves on the Caribbean Baptist Fellowship as the GMBC representative to this fellowship. And of course, we see ourselves in partnership with Lot Carey Wise. So we we have not our women have not been able to travel except for our deputy Reverend Anthony, Reverend Anthony but you know, one of the good things about COVID is that for the last two years, our women have been able to join Lot Carey Wise virtually. And so they had the privilege of participating in our annual events. We did last year, they participated in the annual convention. And this year they were able to join for the spring conference. So we, we, see and we learn we we go to lock carry page and we see what you're doing and we build on it so we are committed to making a difference but not just to this generation we are looking to the future as well 
you are looking to the future. So I'm going to step back just a little bit. So as you're talking about uh, building down, and I'll call it building down because you are reaching down and, and pulling up those people who are in the generation after you, but this isn't new to you. You are, I just found out, a legacy child. You are a legacy a part of a legacy family that has been a part of Lot Carey and the Lot Carey life and the mission world. So tell me about your mom and we're coming up to Mother's Day. So would you be able to salute your mom and the, the legacy that she left for you that you have stepped into? Um, my mom has been for me, not just a mom, but also a mentor and a friend. So this time of the year is one of those times, but I focus on remembering the contributions that she has made and the privilege I had of being able to call her mom. But to understand the legacy of GMBC, it precedes my mom, my dad, like I said, my dad and my mom were the founders. And so, so when dad passed, mom became the superintendent. And then I became the, so I'm the third superintendent in the history of GMBC. And so far it has been a family affair. I like to tell people I went into the family business, but, but, <laughs> but I want to give like Carrie credit that I didn't just go into the family business. I had a call and a lot Kerry stepped up and prepared me for that call. So I came to the US a few decades ago as a lot Kerry scholar. Okay. And entered a HBCU. Which one? Which one? Shaw University. Is there another? Shout out, <laughs> shout out to Shaw. Shout out to Shaw. Shout out to Shaw University. I'm Shaw there. I'm Shaw there. So, uh, because Lot Carey has had a historic um, relationship with Shaw. Yes. And so I came to Shaw and from there entered um, Divinity School. So Lot Carey has played a, a pivotal role in preparing me for this. So I am grateful for my mom and all that she has taught me. And also for Talat Carey for opening the door to prepare me to serve in the 21st century. Excellent. So, Excellent. I, I, so I must shout out, uh, this is a little, little commercial. Uh, shout out to my pastor. I could not continue this conversation without giving him a shout out. And that is to the Reverend Dr. James Arthur Thornton, who is your, let me get the term right, your PEP partner. You're going to explain that to me uh, because I first saw you, I don't remember how many years ago when he probably came back from, maybe it was the first PEP and they had gone to Guyana. You'll, you'll fill me in on that. But he said, oh, Reverend Harewood, Reverend Harewood. And I was like, who's Reverend Harewood? And then I just saw you come into our church and then like you came and you left. And I said, well, okay, like, she's someone important. And then your name came up again. And then here it is a couple of years later, I actually have the opportunity to, to have a personal chat with you. And so again, for those people who are just coming in, this digital couch that Lot Carey is that that Lot Carey Wise is, is sponsoring is because we have such amazing people who are literally around the world doing mission work, and because they sit in another time zone or they sit in a, another country code, we can't necessarily go to them during the year. But as a result of Rona, <laughs> we figured out how to use, as uh, Reverend Harewood said before our call, she was familiar with Skype, but then Zoom took over the room. And now here we are using StreamYard, expanding our territories to get up close and personal with our mission partners. So I just wanted to give that acknowledgement. So just can you mention like the PEP and how PEP, and we have a lot of great comments that I'll bring up in a moment. How does PEP connect with you and other pastors around the world? Because you said that you uh, went to an HBCU, went to Shaw University, and I know my church has a great connection with Shaw University. And then um, you grew up in the mission world. 
went to divinity school and then you you took your rightful place you took your rightful place how does how does pep connect to that and then how does your mission work out of pep take you and other people because i think you may have led a group of people to sort of do some mission work in guyana that may be loaded but i know you'll figure it out <laughs> okay pep is <laughs> we've been using a lot of acronyms <laughs> I'm it's you. an acronym for the pastoral excellence program mm -hmm. it was a project that was funded by the Lilly Endowment. Mm -hmm. The grant was a grant that Lot Carey obtained for this. And the goal of the, the Pastor Excellence Program was to help pastors to, to grow spiritually, personally, through international immersion. It was a deliberate attempt to challenge pastors to deal with issues of self-care because um, what Lily, um, the grants that were given to many other um, agencies was in response to Lily's finding that pastors were crashing and burning they were burning out because they were overworked and not creating space for self-care. With Lot Carey, since we were a mission agency, um, when Dr. Goatley wrote the grant, we felt that we would build on what we do best. And so as a mission agency, we were gonna offer the opportunity for pastors to do self-care but not in their usual context. Because we discover because pastors are so tied to their ministry, when you do something in the US, they come late, they leave early because they have a funeral, they leave in the middle of the event. So, so they, they never really commit. But taking them across the world made that a little challenging. So one of the things pastors knew they had to do is they needed to leave someone in place in case there was a funeral. Build their funeral, team. Whatever emergency. Mentor, so, build their team, expand, build capacity. Yeah, and, and, and create spaces. So so the, the program was done through didactics. Mm -hmm. So we had lectures and conversation, but also it provided an opportunity to pastors to learn from their colleagues in a different context. Because, you know, mission is done mostly in such a way where people are of the opinion that those who bring the money bring all the ideas and all the wisdom. And that there's nothing really that you can learn from people in the two thirds world because they they don't have the same resources. We so so for the pastor excellence program, it was an opportunity for pastors to participate in self care while learning from their colleagues in international context. Beautiful. So they did they did ministry by they were assigned to a partner in ministry there and they were able to come alongside that pastor and serve together. And I would want to say that there are many ideas that our pastors confessed that they brought back from the various international contexts and introduced into their ministry. So it was an opportunity for mutual learning. Cross pollination. And an opportunity for pastors to disconnect um the the program was based on on uh 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 our understanding of orientation disorientation reorientation so the idea was to take pastors from what they were oriented to mm -hmm. and allow them to be totally disoriented and you didn't have to stage it, it happened. And then after theological reflection and time for real self-care, for them to come back with a different place of orientation. 
So that is the pastoral excellence program in a long nutshell. <laughs> and so I'm going to connect this to the mission work that we do here at home. There are some people that literally, and most, just about everyone in Lot Carey, everyone in Lot Carey has a mind for missions. They have a heart for missions. And some people are able to, according to their access and resources, however you want to frame it, and I'm leaving it vague on purpose, that they can step forward, they can step in, they can step through and transform who they are by stepping into a seat of mission work. To that end, depending on your access and your resources, you can put a toe in or you can jump in to the deep end. What people, uh, I guess, sh struggle with, depending on how in you are in, is are, are you going to put the house up because you want to go, you know, into the into the heart of uh, another country? It's just like, you know, listen, I have a heart for missions. I'm selling the house. I'm selling everything I own. I'm just taking a backpack and I'm going. Or are you going to send your money or are you going to take a mission trip? Right. So there's there's, you know, one extreme, not extreme, but there's one end. And then there's the other end. And so what you're talking about is those people who just say, hey, I'm just about to put everything in and I'm going to go into the mission field. and I'm going to do that. And and I, I don't know. I have to say maybe Shaw University, maybe some other mission schools will teach that. And I've heard of it in other denominations, how there are schools that literally craft people and develop people to go. And like Carrie has definitely done that work over time for short mission trips. And thankfully, yes, because I, I have to say that in some communities, and I'll say some black communities, because I'm a part of it, and this is part of my upbringing, that when I had the mind to say, wow, I would love to go to, you know, a, just say a home country, and I'll say a home country, so a country of the Caribbean, a country of the, the African continent, that it wasn't necessary that people said, wow, we'll fully support you to do that, but Honestly, I saw a lot of other people, and now I'm going to shout out to the, um, I'll say as I was growing up, the television shows that we used to watch where, you know, at 11 o'clock at night or before the television went off, you would see, now we know, you know where I'm going with this, right? You would see people of other persuasions, you know, in the mission field and taking care of our own people. And I would think, well, do we do that? And and how do we do that? So I'm I'm really I'm really taken. I'm really moved by conversations because this is this is a this is a divide. This is a divide that's getting smaller, and I'm glad it's getting, it's getting smaller. That we are having greater conversations with the leaders of other countries um, to say yes, you know, the mission work is is real, and we do want you to come. And I'm glad that Lot Carey has devised opportunities for people to take these mission trips, you know, for a week or two weeks and to like do the work that we've done coming alongside of people in very uh, crisis situations, like the work we've done in Haiti, you know, the, the work we've done in, let's say, uh, uh, Puerto Rico during, you know, serious uh, climate issues and, and other disaster situations. So it's amazing to raise younger people, not just to think I'm going to send but I'm going to go. And that's what I think is extremely powerful. And so for you to have the conversation that, yes, we're not, we're saying to the other end of the spectrum, those ministers who have literally dug their heels deep in their own work, let's sort of transplant you, right, to a different land where you can see some of the work that's going on, where you can see outside of your own church walls and see how church is done. Because I know my, my uh, pastor has said, you know, wow, Ministry here is one thing, but ministry, you know, in Guyana is something else. You know, people don't need a whole lot of, let's say, pipe organs or whatever, that, but they praise God like, you know, heaven's, at, you know, heaven's right there outside the door. And that's a great to hear. So as you talk about mentoring and let's shift into the next part of the conversation, as you talk about mentoring and you spoke about this with Wings, that there's a, you know, you've had your family train you and now you with you and Wings 
you are training other people and other leaders and specifically other women. We are so thankful that you are taking the us, you know, under your wing in order to move us to the next to the next uh, stage of ministry. What do you think is the most crucial aspect of rearing the younger women today to take on the work? Because you have literally, you have, you you've come through a lot of a lot of work, and you've paved the way in a lot in a lot of ways. What is one thing that you want the younger women, whoever the younger is that you know what you want to be? How do you want us to continue being mission minded? What's one thing that you want us to keep in our hearts that we should take the reins from you when the time comes to move forward? What do you want us to do? I I think um, we have to get away from the concept that mission is optional. Hmm. Um, we can't be Christian and be non-missional. Mission is not the work of the church. Mission is the work of God. Okay. God is a mission-minded God. And we cannot be in relationship with God. And not be missional. Like God that. sent his son. On a mission. God is a missional God. His son sent the church. Jesus is a missional Christ. The church is sent through the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sent the church. So we cannot claim a relationship with Christ and decide whether we're going to do mission. So I think the church has the responsibility to truly educate its people. Part of being a believer is understanding that you are called to missions. When you receive power, you shall be, not might be, could be, if you want to be. Okay. You shall be my witnesses. Where? Jerusalem. Home mission is important. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to get into the dichotomy of why would I go to Guyana when people in Brooklyn need me? Jerusalem, where else? Judea, where else? Samaria, what else? To this whole the world. world. To, and yeah. we don't have to do I it when I get through with Jerusalem. It didn't say when you're done with Jerusalem. We have to understand that the call to the church is for us to be globally sighted at the same time as we are local. It's not an either or. It's a both and. Always. And we cannot, when we prepare people for water baptism, Prepare them just to sing in the choir. Where are your gifts? Can you sing? Can you usher? We have to understand that they must understand that their gifts include missions. So they must be steward of all their gifts to the entire kingdom of God. And until we as church until every pastor takes seriously God's mandate. We can always have this conversation about whether we should give and how much we should give and what is enough and how long we should stay. Yes, our situations all differ and God calls us differently, but our stewardship as mission people is not optional. And that's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> mm. 
I mean, you can't talk mission and talk about it as if you have a choice, not if you're Christian. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I'm going to pop into the comments uh, for a moment. I want to thank my uh, my stream team for taking notes. So thank you for letting for taking notes on getting, growing, gifting, and going. Somebody, I'm thankful somebody wrote that down because I would have forgotten. Uh, <laughs> thank you for yes taking notes on the women's council being made is made up by leaders from wings, ministries, and various churches. Yes, I needed to remember that. Uh, the pastoral excellence program we did cover that. Somebody from Guyana said good evening, but the person is Facebook user, so I can't figure out who that is. But if you can figure out how to turn your name on, just drop your name in the comments and I'll call your name because she wants to say hi. You know, your family, we want to say hi. Now, we do actually have a really interesting statement. So someone did uh, say that self-care is very important and it counters compassion fatigue. Very, very, very important. So here's a question. How successful was the PEP, the Pastoral Excellence Program, in securing commitments from lot carry pastors? So do you have any information? I mean, and I know it's, I, I know it ran for a number of years. I'm not sure if it's still running. Honestly, I forgive me for that, not knowing. Um, but how how successful was the PEP program in securing commitments from lot carry pastors? Do you have any I'm information? Sure, I understand the question. Commitment in what sense? Well, so actually, um, but but they, they have been commitments in various capacities. Um, the Pastor Excellence Program, we took 120 pastors on international immersion over um, almost a 10-year period. Okay. Um, okay. Currently, Lot Carey has a new program, which is called Thriving in Ministry. Mm -hmm. And they do something similar, but each program is structured differently. So um, I think, um, did PEP accomplish what it set out to do? I would think so. I think we we saw our pastors um, understand the importance of self-care. They understood the importance of connecting to a larger global community. How many pastors became a part of the La Carey family? Mm -hmm. I don't think that in that way we saw numbers, but in we we got some pastors who were already a part of La Carey who remained. Um, the ones who came to us from different denominations did not become La Carey pastors, but mm -hmm. they still support projects if you reach out to them. So I, I think you have to measure the commitment in different ways. Okay, thank you for that clarification because actually mm -hmm. this is my first knowing that some of the clergy were not connected to Lot Carry. So that it, it wasn't a Lot Carry only; it was a, a wider reach, like an so ecumenical. Yeah, it was more ecumenical. Okay. The majority had a Lot Carry connection, but it was not exclusive. Okay. Okay. Uh, so thank you for the person who wrote down that to get away from the concept that mission is optional. I think after tonight, we definitely know that if you want to be Christ-like or have Christ connected to you, that you cannot have Christ connected to you and you not be, help me out here. Let's mission. get some, right. But called, call to care. I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying you're to have some. Stay with your C's. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to stay on my C's. I'm trying to stay on my okay, Right. But, you know, again, so those of you who, who think that, you know, the digital couch is just very, you know, it, it's not. We, you know, there's laughing, there's there's love, you know, there's lightheartedness, and it's, but it's all connected to the work that we're here to do for Lot Carey, for the cause of Christ, because we all are mission in mind, mission minded. Um, so let me just read one more statement. Yes. So missional education and nurturing the call to serve is important. Yes, absolutely. Uh, locally and globally serving God is what good stewards do. Absolutely. Uh, and yes. Thank you for typing that in. Call to care or mission minded. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. And called and committed to service. I appreciate you. So it is. It's seven forty-four. I do want to just be mindful of my of our time. I'm going to ask one more question. If there's any other comments from the audience, please drop them in the comments below, and I will throw it into our our conversation uh, tonight. So, okay. 
if we got it. So we, we discussed social, we discussed some social justice issues of let's say resources, right? Resources that countries may or may not have. And specifically, of course, we're, we're referring to Guyana, but that's just specifically, but literally we are talking about it in a global, a global construct. We're talking about the ministry that is being done in the global mission work. So remember the question that I had about, and I'm just gonna sort of maybe pop back into it for a moment. So you went to Shaw, Shaw prepared you. You are now taking that information in addition to the life that you lived under your parents who led the way as missionaries. As you are now raising, rearing, mentoring these younger women, uh, well, specifically because I'm speaking about women, to do the mission work. Once we're done with Rona, how would you incorporate mission, like global mission into the mentoring that you do for younger women. Now I'll give you an example. So some of the work, some of the work that I do, um, and I do a number of things, but some of the work that I do is to work with young people. And as I try to give young people information, I try to give them information that your work here, like you do, is not just here, but it is globally. So no matter what it is that they do, whether they're an artist, whether they're, you know, in tech, uh, like technology, whether they're in, you know, music or, or some form of the arts education, to think you can do your work here, but literally the world is, is your classroom. The world is where you can do your work. You are currently here in the States, but your other home is in Guyana. And how do you encourage those younger people in Guyana to maybe not just, let's say, not just go, I don't know if you're asking them to go to the, to the United States to do some work, but maybe go to some really like other places, like, I don't know, China or maybe, you know, the African continent or Australia. How do you expand their territory in your mentoring, in your conversation, in the work that you ask them to do, like whether it's tasks or research, how do you get them to expand their their global view? Well, one of the things that um, we teach in our mentoring is helping people to understand that they're global citizens. Um, and part of that is helping them to connect to others. So like Gary provides a unique opportunity, but but our young people are especially connected through the Caribbean Baptist Fellowship. And so they, they participate actively in their youth ministry, um, like with hurricanes and all of that, they raise money and they send to the D disaster relief fund. They are leaders in the, the, I think they meet every three years at their conference. So they are Im immersed into that and travel in the Caribbean because at this point they go, but, but it offers the exposure. So they know that they are not onto themselves, but then also they have the opportunity. Um, when I was at La Carrie at one time, I led the youth department of La Carrie. I was the first staff person that served as the director of youth. And one of the things that we introduced was international immersions from La Carrie. So we would take a group of youth to Guyana for, and once they got there, they were paired with their counterparts. They lived together in the same camp. We traveled together, we studied together. And, and some of those relationships have last. Um, our current youth leader is still connected to some of the Lot Gary leaders who came to Guyana. The Lot Gary youth who came to Guyana. So we create opportunities like that. And then for for women, we have um, sometimes like we have a group of women who might come for our women speak, and they would adapt two or three young people to mentor them. And they email them, 
they share, they give so, so there's that ongoing cross-pollination that happens.